Exactly how many games of poker would you expect to play before your first Royal Flush? Hey everybody, before we can answer the main question of this video, we need to first ask what's the probability of getting a single Royal Flush? Okay, so how do you even define probability in the first place? One nice way is to define it as number of things wanted divided by total number of things. Okay, in this case, the number of things wanted is the number of ways that we can make a Royal Flush, and the total number of things is the total seven card hands that we can make. Okay, and I say seven card hands because we're considering Texas Hold'em Poker, because that's the most popular variety. So, I'll give you a brief rundown of how Texas Hold'em Poker works. So you have two cards, these are the cards that the dealer gives you at the start of the game, and you also have five community cards, okay? Don't need to worry too much about the details, all you need to know is in total we have seven cards to play with, okay? Well, what's the number of ways that we can make a Royal Flush? Okay, so, here's one example at the top. The order is set, it's 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace, but there are four possible suits. Okay, so for our numerator, there's gonna be four possible ways of having a Royal Flush because of the different suits. However, if you look here, here's an example of a Royal Flush. So we have one, two, three, four, five cards making up the Royal Flush, but we also have two cards left over. Excuse me. And this can be anything, anything we like, and that's still a Royal Flush, okay? Well, how many things is there to choose from? Well, we have 52 cards in a deck, but we've already chosen five to make this Royal Flush here. Okay, so you have to take off five, and we're choosing two things. Okay, so that's the numerator. Well, the total number of things, that's going to be the total number of ways that we can make a seven card hand. Okay, well, we have 52 cards to choose from, and we're going to choose seven. Okay? So this is the probability of getting a Royal Flush. Okay, I'm just going to denote this as, this is the probability of a Royal Flush. And don't worry if you don't know what the specifics of what, you know, this notation means. It's not essential for the rest of the video. However, this turns out to be approximately, okay, I'll write approximately 0.000032, which I'm going to let equal P, because, you know, it'll be neater to write P this in the video than this thing. Okay, so that was easy, we've worked out the probability of a Royal Flush, but there may be times when, you know, you don't just need the probability, you need to know how long you expect to be playing poker for until you get that Royal Flush, right? Hey Jimmy, get your ass down here, the takeaway's arrived! Uh, okay Dad, just, just give me one second, I'm just trying to get a Royal Flush! Fine, but how long are you gonna be? Uh, I don't know Dad, maybe like, just... Ten more games? Ah, but if your chicken wings get cold, Lord help me! God damn it, Jimmy! Okay, well, what answer should Jimmy have given his dad? How many games would you play on average to get a Royal Flush? So before we get into that, just recall that the probability of getting one Royal Flush is approximately 0.000032 and let P be this probability, just so I don't have to write that down every single time and let Q equal 1 minus P which is just the probability of not getting a Royal Flush. And finally, let n, this random variable, be the number of games played before your first Royal Flush, and including that last game. Okay, so we want to work out, we want to work out the expectation of n. Well, how do you define expectation? So, this is purely going over the definition. We have the sum of all possible values of n, of n times the probability that the number of games played is equal to n, this little n, okay? And the number of games, I mean, it starts from one. We have to play at least one game to get one Royal Flush. And n can be as large as we want, right? Well, what is the probability that n is n? Okay, so consider if it takes us n games to get one Royal Flush, our first Royal Flush. Well, what happened? So in the first game, we didn't get a Royal Flush, okay, and that happens with probability Q. And in the second game, we didn't get a Royal, Royal Flush. And in the third, and in the fourth, and then the fifth, all the way to the n minus one game, we didn't get a Royal Flush. Okay, so this is uh, dot 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 times Q. Because I write times here so it's a bit clearer. And this happens, this happens n minus one times. And on the final nth game, we do in fact get the Royal Flush. Okay, and that happens with probability P. 
And the reason we can just time these things together is because each game is independent. Whatever happened on the previous game doesn't affect the probability of getting a Royal Flush on the next game. Okay, well what's this equal to? So we have Q times itself N minus 1 times. So that's Q to the N minus 1. And then we just have a single P. Right, so we can write this up here. So this is equal to the sum to infinity n equals 1 of n times this guy, which is q to the n minus 1 times p. Right? So, let's rub that out. p doesn't depend on n, so I can simply bring p out to the front, and then we just have to evaluate this expression. Okay, and if you've seen some of my other videos, you might, you might have a clue of how to do this. But if not, just zoom out and take a moment to think. Okay, so we're times in by something that's one more than the power that we're raising to, which is very similar to differentiation. So we can write this as p times the sum to infinity n equals 1 of d by dp, sorry, d by dq, of q to the power of n. Okay, because we bring down the power and then decrease the power by 1. Right, well, if you have the sum of differentials, you can bring that differential operator to the front. Okay, so what do I mean by that? I mean, you can just bring this guy out to the front. So we still have the sum, n equals 1 to infinity of q to the n. Okay, well, now this is just a geometric series, we can evaluate this. So, and we can evaluate this because q is definitely less than 1 because it's, it's a probability. So this is equal to p times d by dq of this, this thing. Okay, well the first term is q. I'm gonna be divided by one minus r, where r is the common ratio. In this case, r is q, so we have one minus q on the bottom, and it's the differential of this thing. And we got this just from applying the infinite geometric series formula. Okay, now take the derivative of this thing with respect to q, we get, well, the derivative of something of the form u of a v is v u dash minus u v dash of the v squared, where u dash and v dash means the differential. Okay, so let's get into that. We have p times the thing on the bottom, 1 minus q times u dash, the differential of this with respect to q, which is just 1, so I won't try to anything down. Then we have minus u times v dash, the differential of this, which is going to be minus 1. So this becomes a plus, and then we're dividing this entire thing by 1 minus q squared, the thing on the bottom squared. Okay, well, how did we define 1 minus q in the first place? 1 minus q was defined to be p. So this can be written as, obviously the q's going to cancel on top, so we have p times 1 over p squared, because 1 minus q was defined to be p, okay? And vice versa, obviously. And this is equal to, well this cancels, so we get 1 over p, right? The expected value of n is 1 over p, which was not point, not, 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 3, 2. Okay, and this works out to be approximately, if I look at the cheat sheet, Right there, uh, 30,000, which is equal to 30,940. 30,940 games. Okay, and if you play for 50 years and you play every week, you expect to play around 12 games per week, right? And you get that just from dividing this thing by 50 times 52, which is a lot of games. Okay, but that was really interesting. I especially liked this part where you can uh, switch the derivatives. You can uh, bring the differential op operator out to the front. I think that's really cool. And yeah, that's everything. Okay, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. This content is not on the internet, not on the web, sorry, and it's not on YouTube. So if you like the original content, please like and subscribe and leave me any suggestions in the comment section. Thank you. Yo guys, subscribe to Mad Math.